me and Danny Dyer got famous really quick. I mean, you think about it, 10, 15 years ago when all these great movies were out. We was like De Niro and, and Pesci, you know what I mean? And walking around, we was the, the main guys and we was getting paid fortunes to go to clubs and uh, and party and have a good time. And Because we, we kind of invented the PA, me and Danny. When we was turning up at clubs, and it was, we were walking out on the stage, there's two, three thousand screaming kids. Like, yeah. we're standing there going, you thought Elvis Presley and Michael Jackson yeah. walks out onto the stage, you know what I mean? So we messed up. I've messed up. You know, Danny's renowned, you know, not renowned, Danny's publicly gone to rehab and stuff. I didn't let the other stuff get older. But we messed up in the sense where we thought that was it. And then we started, beha- I started being, not so I'm not going to speak, but I started behaving badly on set. And I started thinking I'm rock and roll and I started, you know, uh, drinking too much and doing this and doing that. And the industry fast turns around and says, it's different from fast turns around and says, he's a liability. We yeah. can't be fucked with this bollocks because there, there's too many of us. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's happened to me. So I can speak from experience. And then I was in actor's jail for God knows how long. I couldn't bag a job for love, no money because people, you get that reputation. And it took three or four years for me to get back in the game and start working again. The audience is, if you're convincing enough, and this isn't blowing smoke up my ass, because us as actors, we get ink on a page and we have to make the audiences believe that we're those characters. And a lot of people say to me, oh, you're just like you are in the films. And I'm like, well, I'm not, because I don't kill people and I don't <laughs> bash people up and stuff. But, you know, and but they, they're they relatable. They they want a lot of, I've, as I've got older, it's really satisfying in one way, but upsetting in another way where you've got kids, especially up in the north of England, I've got a big fan base up there, and kids can't go, you was my father figure, I loved you in the business, I loved you in Lake, I loved you in, you know, uh, Football Factory. Uh, one side of it says to me, well, that's good that you could look at someone and, and aspire to be someone like that and have that as a father figure. And the other side of me is, do you really want to be a gangster? Mm. You know, I've been there, I've been that side of the tracks and it ain't pleasant and when we did we did a we did a a a, 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 a regional tour with the football factory and we went there and everyone was like they wanted to be me or fred and i had to say look this is entertainment one but remember this if you want to be a thug you want to be a career thug or or, or a football hooligan what my character did to danny dyer's character will eventually happen to you Mm. you've got to be prepared for that and if you're not prepared for that then don't do then don't do it stand on the bike listen we're an island race we like to watch a fight don't we be a bystander and watch them do it but don't get involved because it's not a nice place to be and um and it little things like i go to, i love football and you know i'm a Millwall fan, yeah, like Millwall fan yeah. but i love chelsea as well because all the boys were chelsea there. well I, people say i'm chelwall <laughs> which is quite funny because because I went to that. No, I'm going to go tell Thomas Chelwell because you know for everyone from John Terry to Wayne Bridges, Ashley Cole, all the boys, Frank Lampard, all friends of mine, and all of us lower league clubs have a have a Premiership club. Yeah, you know, I love Chelsea, I love Real Madrid, right? And um, and I'd go down there. What a great place to go and watch a game of football down at King's Road. And I'd go down there and I'd turn up and and I'd go listen. I've got to talk them. You know, if if, if Messi's Tottenham draws fucking Barcelona in the, in the Champions League and someone says you know I've got a ticket I go yeah yeah I want to go and watch Messi or I'm a football widow I mean I love football so yeah. much and then you get there and it's like what are you fucking doing here you're Millwall weren't you Millwall Fred and I just look at him and I go like it's just a film mate do you know what I mean like, yeah. it's, like you get and then you get I've had people when I'm out in clubs, I, I did a film called Dead Man Running and we had, I've always got these epic fight scenes, which I, I choreograph myself. I do a lot of my own stuff. And people come out and they're like, all right, mate, like, big cunt, isn't you? I'm sorry I'm swearing, I shouldn't no, say. No, fine. Yeah, big lad, isn't you? And I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you, remember, you're only tough in the movies, you know? And I just look at them like that. And this my mate's just go, mate, listen, fuck off and leave him alone. Because I look at him sometimes and I think, oh God, you have no idea. And I have to say to him, so like, listen, fuck off, mate, because you're going to catch a cold. You'll wake up with a fucking split in that egg. You're going to know what's, leave me alone. And I'm so tolerant and patient because I love people. And 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 you, you how am I with everyone? everyone I've got, you ever go out with me? I'll give everyone time of day, but you always get the odd one that wants to say that or do that. And... Antagonize and antagonise me, but I'm I'm big and ugly enough to fucking. I'm very patient. I've got a lot of patience, but they do kind of some. But you know what? Generally, the, my public's beautiful. They're lovely. They're so 
polite and accommodate because I give that back to them. I'll give everyone the same. I've sat with, I won't say no, I've sat with um, with big stars uh, at tables and they've come up with kids and they go, look, I'm eating. And I'm like, but hang on, before you're famous, you want that now. You... Yeah. And I say to them, listen, stop it. Even with the press, I'll come out and the press love me. I'll come out and I'm in a club and I'll grab the nearest bird. I'll go, listen, we're going to have a baby bird. And they go, town, fuck off, just give us a picture. Because <laughs> I worked it out. You start getting out of cars with dark winners, entourages through the back door, they're going to come after you. But my whole thing is, it's the food chain. They're standing outside <clears throat> in the freezing fucking cold to get a smudgy walking. Give it to them. Yeah. Give it to them. What are they going to get? 100 quid for I don't get with Johnny Depp or Tamaras or Danny Dyer. There's a quote, they're going to get a couple of hundred quid. If I can give it to them, give them a story. But I'm like this, I smoke, I do a lot of cancer charities. I'm like, I'll come out and I'll have a wine out. Like, Let me have the fucking flag, I'll come and give you a picture. They go, go on in. So I work with them, I, I, I relate to them. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and that's kind of where I'm at, but go on. Yeah.